Hello everybody, good evening. So welcome again to our Facebook Live on nursing prioritization and delegation. So I know you're all excited. I'm receiving a lot of messages in the inboxes, uh, students asking questions. So just always remember guys that uh, the music that we have is only an introduction to make sure that our sound is working, okay? So um, we have uh, questions again for tonight and I know that all of you really want to have a lot of questions. However, it's really difficult to come up with really very good questions. So always realize or understand that making questions is not easy okay so however uh we try our best to come up with the best questions ever so that uh these are quality type of questions that you will encounter in your nclex examination all right so before anything else as usual i would like to introduce myself welcome to our facebook live on nursing delegation and prioritization and my name is mr alan matus i am a nurse educator I have been teaching students for more than 25 years, helping them pass their NCLEX. I'm also a nursing faculty at this time in a nursing college. And then at the same time, I'm the uh, president and the uh, founder of uh, Matus Nursing Review and Matus Nursing Review Online NCLEX Academy. So for tonight, we have uh, prepared many questions for you. Not really many, but uh, uh, exciting questions for you. Okay. So before anything else, I would like to give a shout out to some of our students, okay, in the inbox. All right, so um, I think we have new students for tonight. So we have uh, Kadiato, okay, Kadiato, maybe you're here before also. So uh, thank you, welcome here tonight. Uh, we have Sonu, Sonu, thank you very much for being here also. Uh, remember that we are sharing this uh, Facebook Live in YouTube as well. So um, uh, this, uh, this uh, Facebook Live is being shared in different, uh, uh, online channels, okay? We also have Timitopi uh, Alaba, so welcome here tonight as well, okay? We also have Rika, so Rika, nice to uh, see you here. Uh, uh, it's welcome, so I'm not sure if you were here before. Um, also, we have um, Angel, so I think Angel is new to the group. So thank you guys for joining me. I know that uh, you're all excited to see the questions for tonight, but before anything else, I would like to make some announcements, okay? Uh, our first announcement is a big one because this is an update in the NCLEX examination. And it was released only a few days ago. So the NCSBN, okay, the NCSBN modifies the uh, NCLEX RN and NCLEX PN, effective October 1, 2020. You should remember that earlier this year, the uh, NCSPN made some modifications in the ex NCLEX examination because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. So um, at this point in time, you're receiving 60 items as the minimum number of questions and then 130 questions as the maximum. Um, however, starting October 1, 2020, there is going to be a change in the uh, exam. It's not really a very big change. However, just remember that the time limit of the examination has been extended to five hours, five hours now, and the minimum number of test items will be 75. And the reason why the minimum is 75 items is because uh, uh, the NCSBN is adding again the 15 pre-test non-scored items. So that's why from 60, it's now 75 as the minimum. And then also the maximum number of test items will be 145, 145 items, okay? So the pre-test items will be included and these are non-scored items. So meaning that um, you cannot identify these pre-test or research items during the NCLEX. They are also not scored. And also at the end of your examination, the NCSBN also will introduce again the special experimental next generation NCLEX session which will be added. Uh, remember that the new format of the NCLEX, the next gen NCLEX style questions will be introduced uh, supposedly in 2023, okay? So, and also uh, another change is that the NCLEX tutorial will be replaced with general guide and test taking tips only. And also again, you may have all uh, the same questions. The question is, uh, is the exam going to be more difficult or is it going to be this uh, easiest? Well, uh, NCSBN says that despite the changes, there will be no 
uh, change in the passing standard. The passing standard remains the same, so there's no change in that. So nothing to worry about. Just be aware of the number of questions that you need to take minimum, which is 75, and the maximum will be 145. If you have more questions about this, just send me an email or a message, and I will be uh, I will be glad to answer your questions, everyone. Okay. So take note of this change. It's going to happen in, in October 1, 2020. Okay. All right. So another one uh, I would like to share a very nice picture that was sent to us. Okay. Recently, uh, our student uh, Fresel sent us this picture. Remember the last few weeks I sent some uh, bookmarks or I emailed some bookmarks or I mailed some bookmarks. So hopefully some of you were able to receive those. Okay. At this time, we are not... Um, mailing out bookmarks again it's going to be soon maybe next week so uh, just watch out okay so we have the uh, bookmark uh, of uh, matus nursing review and it has the laboratory uh, values in front of the bookmark which you can use so we're going to have that promo again next time so watch out join the facebook live we may be giving away giving away for free again the bookmarks everyone okay all right, so and then another announcement, everybody. That's going to be congratulations to Mary Jane. Okay, Mary Jean makes for passing the NCLEX PN exam this August 2020. So she is one of our recent passers, and actually, she wrote a very nice testimonial in the uh, Facebook page that we have. So thanking us for the uh, for the help, especially the session that we're doing this every Thursday. She's really very thankful because uh, she thinks or she experienced in her NCLEX that most of the questions were on prioritization and delegation. So she really thanks the session that we do every week and watch out everyone because uh, we will have more questions in the future. So thank you very much, uh, Mary Jean, and congratulations on passing your NCLEX PN. And we are very glad that we were able to help you in uh, passing your NCLEX. Okay. Now again, for tonight, uh, without further ado, uh, just remember that again, we will have the free 90-day online access NCLEX review, everybody, okay? So we're gonna have a raffle again. And again, at the end of this program, we're going to announce the winner of our raffle for last week, okay? So we're gonna be announcing that at the very end of the program. So stay tuned because you may be the winner, everyone, okay? So that is so exciting. And we have people who actually passed the NCLEX uh, being, uh, uh, being winners of this 90-day online access NCLEX review, okay? All right, so before anything else, everybody, just one uh, last time again, okay? Can you please uh, tell me from which country are you coming from, everybody? I would like to find out what part of the world, okay, you are, uh, you are attending this session, okay? I wanna find out, are you in the US? Are you international? What part of the... Uh, of the world are you everyone okay so we have uh barker actually uh so she received the bookmark so very good okay then we also have uh ginger actually also received the bookmark as well so very good um also okay well general test taking tips um i think that what the nplex means there there's a question in the inbox about uh the test taking tips. I think that before you start your NCLEX, uh, NCSBN will give you a little bit of uh, orientation before the examination, how the exam goes, okay? What are the mechanics of the examination or just simple instructions possibly, okay? So, and then also uh, we have Pimetope, okay, so she really wants it, okay. Anyway, so from Nepal, we have Eva Eva also, okay? And anyway, for tonight, everyone, we're going to have your first question on prioritization. Uh, the focus for tonight will be about anticoagulation. So most of our questions for tonight is going to be about heparin and warfarin. I'm not very sure how good you are in terms of heparin and warfarin, but we'll be learning some of the important information about them for tonight. Okay, so get ready because our questions will be all about heparin and warfarin everybody so say a very big yes everyone if you are ready to uh, answer our first question everybody okay all right so we have from abu dhabi we have maria dabu very good so we have that we also have rachel zumel from new york okay then we also have uh, 
Mike Serafico. So I'm not sure where Mike is coming from. So we have from West Palm Beach. I really enjoy knowing where you're all coming from, guys. It's really exciting. Okay, so let's have the first question for tonight about coagulate anticoagulation, everyone. So this is going to be all about warfarin. Okay, so the first question is, the nurse is assisting clients who are taking warfarin in the Comedin clinic. Which of the following client statements require immediate attention? A, my INA result was 3.0 and my provider did not change my current dose. B, it has been difficult to eliminate broccoli, lettuce, and spinach from my diet. C, I recently bought an electric razor to avoid nicks and cuts when shaving. And letter D, I have to avoid drinking alcohol on a daily basis while taking warfarin. So what do you think is the best answer every one? The nurse is assisting clients who are taking warfarin in the Comedin clinic. Which of the following client statements require immediate attention? A, my INA result was 3.0 and my provider did not change my current dose. B, it has been difficult to eliminate broccoli, lettuce, and spinach from my diet. C, I recently bought an electric razor to avoid nicks and cuts when shaving. Or D, I have to avoid drinking alcohol on a daily basis while taking warfarin. And I would like you to put your rational, everyone, okay? You put your rational, why is it that letter A, B, C, or D is your answer? I would like to find out why your answer is A, B, C, or D, okay? So, okay? So the question here is, it's asking which one? requires immediate attention so meaning the patient said something that is alarming okay something that needs to be looked at okay something that needs immediate attention immediate attention means that you probably need to correct your patient you probably have to to uh, intervene and re-educate your patient okay or maybe there is a safety issue that is involved okay so let's uh, dissect the question everyone so in this question everybody it requires your knowledge about warfarin your content did i tell you before that content is very important in answering questions right um before you can attack questions you need to have a strong content or foundation of nursing and that's really very important and then after that you do your strategies so let's see what is the rationale of some of you guys. Why is A, B, C, or D the answer? Okay, immediate attention means, okay, immediate attention means, okay? All right, so let's have your answer, everyone. Okay, so which of the client statements should, be, uh, should require immediate attention? Okay, immediate attention, okay? So the answer for this question is going to be letter B, everybody, you're all correct. The patient said, it has been difficult to eliminate broccoli, lettuce, and spinach from my diet. Okay, now why is letter B the answer, everyone? Now, most of you got the answer correct, but I have one question to everybody. My question is, when the patient is taking warfarin, is the patient supposed to avoid vegetables? Is the patient supposed to avoid vegetables when taking warfarin? Is it total elimination of vegetables or is it uh, being consistent with the diet? What is more important, being consistent or is it eliminating all green leafy vegetables that are high in vitamin K? So I'll give you the rationale for this question why letter B is the answer. Letter B is the answer to this question because when the patient is taking warfarin, it doesn't mean that the patient will totally eliminate all vitamin K rich foods or vegetables. The most important thing or, uh, or um, uh, factor to consider when taking warfarin is to be consistent with the diet. The patient can still take, um, can still eat vegetables, but be consistent. The patient, if he has any plans of changing his diet drastically, he needs to inform the provider because any sudden increase or elimination 
or decrease of uh, high vitamin K rich foods will affect the result of the warfarin therapy okay or the effectiveness of warfarin therapy so the reason why B requires attention is to educate the client because what the client said is wrong okay he doesn't need to eliminate broccoli lettuce and spinach from the diet the patient can still take whatever vegetables he was taking before the amount however just be consistent okay but not to eliminate any vegetables because that can also lead to deficiencies later on so again just remember there is no need to avoid or to totally eliminate your green and leafy vegetables however consistency in diet is the most important thing and if the client plans to drastically change the amount of intake of green and leafy vegetables the provider must be notified about that in order to probably adjust the dose of uh, warfarin okay so consistency with the diet guys is the most important is it's not suddenly increased it's not it's not suddenly decreased of your green and leafy vegetable intake all right okay so a is uh, okay a is okay because an inr of, of 3.0 is within the therapeutic range the therapeutic range for inr when the patient is on warfarin dosing is two to three so two to three is still okay if the uh, inr is above three the patient may be hypercoagulating and that could lead to bleeding so three is okay there is no need to change the dose and that is acceptable now let us see i recently bought an electric razor that is okay because when the person or when the patient is on warfarin therapy we advise actually that the patient avoid the use of standard razor or blade so it has to be an electric razor as much as possible because the electric razor does not come in contact with the skin and you can avoid cuts with that larry d i have to avoid drinking alcohol of course uh, the patient taking warfarin can drink alcohol occasionally in a limited amount but not on a daily regular basis because your alcohol can actually cause uh, bleeding potentiation of bleeding so that's the reason why the patient needs to avoid alcohol because it antagonizes the action of your um, of your clotting. It causes bleeding uh, as an effect. Okay, so all right. So let's see the rationale. So some people mentioned about two to three. Yes, of course. For someone taking warfarin, the therapeutic level for INR is two to three. Two to three for if you're taking warfarin. Okay, all right. So very good some people are giving the rationals very good consistency very good okay not to avoid but consistent with diet only being consistent with diet very good everybody so you got that not that not to totally eliminate the green and leafy vegetables very good okay so it's all about consistency thank you very much everyone so that's our first question i hope you got that right so the next question that we will have is going to focus again on anticoagulation so let's see if you get the right answer for this one okay so the next question is going to be about your heparin therapy it's kind of like applies to registered nurses so the registered nurse receives the activated partial thromboplastin time or, a or aptt result of a client who is receiving intravenous heparin therapy and notes a value of 110 seconds 110 seconds or 110 seconds so which of the following is the priority nursing action okay a continue the heparin infusion b hold the infusion c notify the provider immediately or d administer protamine sulfate okay again the question is all about your um heparin therapy everyone okay heparin therapy so the registered nurse receives the activated partial thromboplastin time or aptt result of a client who is receiving intravenous heparin therapy and notes a value of 110 seconds which of the following is the priority nursing action a continue the heparin infusion, B, hold the infusion, C, notify the provider immediately, or D, you have to give your protamine sulfate. 
Okay? All right. So let's see what's the answer of everybody. Okay? Let's see everyone. All right. So in answering this question, everybody, the technique is to really make sure that you know, okay, how or what is the uh, heparin anticoagulation protocol, especially on how we deal with the laboratory monitoring, okay? So always remember, just to give you a tip, that when the patient is under heparin therapy, the protocol is to have a goal of uh, the therapeutic effect effectiveness, which is uh, 1.5 to 2.5 times the control value. So remember that. 1.5 to 2.5 times the control value. And the normal APTT is what? The normal APTT is 30 to 40 seconds. Generally, it's 30 to 40 seconds. Okay? All right. So let's see if you want to change your answer, everybody. Okay? So the answer to this question is going to be... Okay? Are you ready, everybody? Okay? The answer to this question is going to be very good. Letter B hold the infusion and by the way somebody was asking earlier what is the normal what is the normal INR okay the INR if you are not taking warfarin is somewhere I think 1.1 or below if you are not taking warfarin it's 1.1 or below however if a person is taking warfarin the INR should be 2 to 3 in order to be considered uh, therapeutic okay however here the answer for this question is going to be letter b hold the infusion why because your aptt let's say is 30 to 40 seconds and the goal is 1.5 to 2.5 times the normal value or the control value uh, 110 seconds is really very high and it's beyond the goal that we have so we have to hold the infusion uh, maybe an hour or something as part of the protocol and then check again however however uh, we have to discontinue the, we have to avoid continuing the infusion because bleeding is already happening probably here. Uh, let us see, notifying the provider immediately is the last thing you want to do. Um, you may want to give a uh, protamine sulfate uh, as an intervention, but always remember that the first goal is to hold the infusion and then don't forget also to assess your patient. Assess your patient, everyone, find out if bleeding is happening. So hold the infusion and then assess your patient. And then maybe you can notify the provider and then give your protamine sulfate unless there is a standing protocol for giving protamine sulfate for toxicity, okay? So the answer for this question, everybody, is going to be letter B. So I'm not sure if most of you got the right answer. I think you did, most of you got the right answer. So things to remember in the NCLEX exam about heparin and warfarin will be the difference between the two medications, which one is rapid acting, which one is delayed acting. And also remember that your warfarin is delayed acting. Usually the effect of warfarin is like three to five days. And that's the reason why sometimes when we're bridging heparin and warfarin, we call that anticoagulation bridging. Um, we usually start your warfarin ahead of time before we discontinue your heparin so that by the time we, we discontinue heparin, the INR is already therapeutic or near therapeutic, okay? And also you have to remember the proper ways to inject your heparin subcutaneously, uh, intravenous infusions in units, and your warfarin is oral anticoagulant. And don't forget also your antidotes, everyone. The antidotes for warfarin is vitamin K, and the antidote for your heparin sulfate is your protamine, is, uh, for your heparin is your protamine sulfate. And never forget the INR goal of two to three that always comes out in the NCLEX, and if the INR is low, we may increase the dose of your warfarin. If the INR is high, we may decrease the dose of warfarin or hold the warfarin. Okay? And also never forget about the uh, things to avoid when the client is taking anticoagulants. Avoid standard razor. Use electric razor instead um, uh, for your warfarin. Be consistent with your vitamin K vegetable diets as well. Okay, and generally for both anticoagulants, you have to avoid uh, um, aspirin or any other forms of anticoagulants that can uh, potentiate the bleeding. Okay, and remember your anticoagulants act on the clotting factors to delay the clotting process. Okay, they block the clotting factors. So thank you very much for that, guys. Um, so we will now have your delegation questions, everyone. Okay, so let's see. 
So yes, your warfarin is an oral anticoagulant. When they say in the NCLEX that your warfarin, uh, that you have an oral anticoagulant, that will be your warfarin, which is being given in milligrams, okay? Now, what are the other questions that you have, everyone? Okay, warfarin is delayed acting, we, we, we know that. Your heparin is never given IM, it is only IV and subcutaneously, okay? All right, and you should know the labs to monitor. For heparin, that would be your PTT or APTT, okay? Your partial thromboplastin time or the activated partial thromboplastin time. For your warfarin, that would be your prothrombin time, INR, okay? International normalized ratio. So we're learning a lot tonight, everybody, hopefully, okay? So now let's go to your, okay, to your delegation question. Are you ready, everybody, for your delegation question for tonight? Okay, so your delegation question again also will focus on anticoagulation as well. So let's see. Uh, I think a lot of you are getting better with the uh, delegation. So let's see your answers, everybody. Okay, so let's go to your delegation question for tonight. Okay, so the question is the registered nurse or RN works with the licensed practical nurse in caring for clients who are on anticoagulation therapy. Which of the following tasks can be delegated to the LPN? Select all that apply. A. Administer warfarin medication. B. Titrate the heparin infusion dosage. C. Report any signs of bleeding. D. Educate the client on anticoagulation protocol. Or E. Analyze the results of the INR. Okay, so let's repeat the question. The registered nurse works with the licensed practical nurse in caring for clients who are on anticoagulation therapy. So which of the following tasks can be delegated to the LPN? So select all that apply. Okay. A. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave the answer actually to the question. I don't know what happened here, guys. Okay. I'm reading it, but the answer is already there. I think it's reversed. Okay. I'm sorry for that. That's why I was looking at it. There's a highlight. But anyway, everyone, I'm sorry. But uh, the answer is actually letter A. Very good. So, um, administer warfarin infusion. You got the bonus, everybody, I guess. Okay. So, and then also report any signs of bleeding. Okay. That sucks a little bit, but then that's okay, everybody. Okay, I don't know what happened here because my slides, I think, moved forward, okay? But I promise you the next one will not have answers, okay? So, so the answer is shown, everybody. Um, it's not going to happen in the NCLEX, so the answer will show everyone. And uh, once in a while, we get this, uh, this, uh, uh, this um, problem, okay? But very good, everybody. So now we're left with one question, everybody, for your delegation. So you better get right the right uh, get the, the right answer for the last one, everyone, okay? Okay, but just explain the question here, everybody. This is a very good example. Let's just go back to here, okay, to this one. So we have a, a funny moment for tonight. So never forget this day, everybody, okay? So uh, you should know how difficult it is to make a question, everyone. And to show the answer is a little bit frustrating here because uh, um, questions are hard to make. All right. So letter A, administer warfarin, of course, an LPN can give that medication because that's oral medication. Uh, titrate the heparin infusion dosage. No, any heparin infusion or IV cannot be given by the LPN. IV medication is supposed to be given only by the RN. Letter C, report any signs of bleeding. Of course, if the LPN notes any signs of bleeding, then she has to report that. Education and analysis require higher critical thinking. So that would be uh, the responsibility of the RN, okay? Educate the client on anticoagulation protocol and analyze the results of the INR. So let's take the question out, everybody, okay? So I promise you that the question, okay, that the next question will have no answers to everybody. Okay, so that's, uh, hopefully that happens in the NCLEX when they give you the free answers, right? Okay, but anyway, that's not going to happen. So for tonight, we will have our last question. As a bonus, because of what happened for tonight, next week, there will be an additional question. Okay, so I promise that. So next week, there will be an additional question because of what happened tonight. And be present next week also, because we may have another promo next week. Okay, so let's proceed. But still, it's nice knowing the answer to that question. Okay. All right, but um, we took that question out, okay? But then I'm gonna show you something uh, before the end also, which you will uh, appreciate. All right, 
So this one, guys, has no answer. All right. So the registered nurse starts an intravenous, uh, intravenous heparin infusion to a client who is at high risk for deep vein thrombosis or DVT. Uh, which of the following tasks can be delegated to the UAP? Okay. So this one will be the UAP, everyone. So the registered nurse, okay, starts an IV infusion of heparin to a client who is at high risk for deep pain thrombosis. Which of the following tasks can be delegated to the UAP? Select all that apply. A, check the insertion site for infection. B, explain the purpose of heparin protocol. C, report when the infusion pump is beeping. D, change the sterile dressing on the needle insertion site or E, provide the client with a soft bristle toothbrush. Okay. So what do you think is the answer for this one? Okay. The registered nurse starts an IV or intravenous heparin infusion to a client who is at high risk for deep pain thrombosis. Which of the following tasks can be delegated to the UAP? A, check the insertion site for infection. B, explain the purpose of heparin protocol. C, report when the infusion pump is beeping. D, change the sterile dressing in the needle insertion site. Or E, provide the client with a soft bristle toothbrush. Okay, so which one here is a simple protocol or a simple routine that can be delegated to the UAP or can be part of the of the responsibility of the UAP, okay? A, B, C, or D, A, okay, that would be checking the insertion site for infection, B, explaining the purpose of the heparin protocol, C, report when the infusion pump is beeping, D, changing the sterile dressing on the needle insertion site, or E, provide a client with a soft bristle toothbrush. All right, so, most of you got the answer, everyone. Okay, so let's see the answer. So the answer to this question, everybody, I think most of you got it right. You know, some people chose only letter E, but the answer to this question is going to be, all right, so that would be letter C and E. Very good. I think 99% of you got the right answer, everybody, okay? Now, always remember that letter C, reporting when the infusion pump is beeping, of course, the... Uh, UAP can do that, you know. What is the UAP supposed to do when the pump is beeping? Of course, something is wrong. So the UAP is not supposed to check what's going on with the pump, but at least you can call the RN to make sure that some to check if something is wrong with the pump, right? Always remember that the UAP is with the patient probably the whole time during the shift. So whatever happens to the pump, the UAP is supposed to report that to the to the RN. What what happens if the if the uh, IV infusion pump is beeping or stops working, for example, then that needs to be reported, okay? So uh, always remember, if we don't do anything, then we're not giving the medication. Now, letter E, providing the client with a soft bristle toothbrush. That is important because, um, of course, when the person is un under anticoagulation, we want to prevent bleeding, right? So, um, however, we can delegate to the UAP to get the toothbrush and provide that to the patient just to make sure that uh, we prevent uh, gum bleeding during toothbrushing, okay? Now, letter A, checking the insertion site of infection is not something to be delegated because that is uh, an assessment. Letter B, um, letter B is education, so definitely that should not be delegated to the, to the UAP. And letter D, uh, always remember that UAP cannot perform sterile procedures. That's it. Anything sterile procedure, the UAP is not supposed to do that because um, anything to do with sterility should be performed by either the LPN or the RN. Okay? So congratulations for those who got the right answer for this. Finally, we have a question with no answer. Okay? Better late than never. Thank you so much for the review questions. God bless you and stay safe. Of course, it's only a few questions for tonight, guys, but we have been doing this for a while now, so we have a lot of questions, okay? Now, I wanna share something with you tonight, everybody, okay? So I wanna share this with you. Um, this is a very um, uh, uh, very short, or let's say, uh, 
just a quick mnemonic or just tips on RN delegation. So RN delegation tips. As what I have always said, if the RN is delegating to the new graduate, always consider the scope of practice. Is that within the scope of practice? And you should assign a stable patient to someone who is a new graduate, of course. Okay. Um, next, the RN to LPN uh, also consider the scope of practice and also it has to be a stable patient. So for example, if the, the LVN or the LPN can actually give warfarin medication, however, if the patient is unstable, you may not want to assign a patient who is unstable to someone, uh, to an LPN. So uh, especially the new admissions, uh, probably those patients with, uh, with newly diagnosed angina pictoris or newly admitted probably for uh, myocardial infarction or having a stroke. Now for RN to UIP, as what we have said, always remember, uh, consider the scope of practice. It has to be a stable patient. And then also uh, only simple routines. So you have the three letter S's there, simple routines only. Uh, RN to floaters, uh, remember also the scope of practice of the person stable. From what department is that floater coming from? You know, what's the experience of that person? What's the specialization? So you assign a patient for in the uh, floater may have similar skills, or you can also assign uh, to a floater um, um, task or patients that does not, patients that do not require uh, special uh, interventions or interventions that require special training. Like for example, um, patients who have arrhythmias, you may not want to assign uh, a regular nurse is someone with arrhythmias who needs uh, cardiac monitoring, especially with electrocardiogram, okay? So I hope you're learning tonight, everyone, um, hopefully. And again, before I end tonight and before we announce the winner for tonight, okay? All right, so just uh, plugging a little bit my uh, our program. So visit www.contusnursingreviewacademy.com to uh, get information more about our program. We have live classes and then we also have self-study programs. Uh, we do have your, uh, we do have uh, the workbook uh, that everybody likes. And also we have the study plan checklist. We have NCLEX quizzes. Um, also we have uh, Facebook discussion groups. We have uh, uh, access up to 12 months. So just visit the website, everybody, and then you can see how you can benefit uh, from the program and what program fits your needs, everyone, okay? Then of course, everyone, if you wanna see all of the complete videos that we have, um, sometimes when you go to Facebook or to YouTube, sometimes it's so disorganized when we put it there. So um, if you wanna have the complete set and much easier to follow all the videos that we had before, you can go to our, um, to our online academy and you can actually subscribe monthly in order to watch all of the videos ever since from the start, you know, before you take your NCLEX. So we have that in the online academy. It's a monthly subscription from $9.99, I guess. I'm not sure, but we're changing that price soon. So uh, uh, also this Facebook Live will be there as well, okay? So and there's a comment section. If you have any questions there, I can answer. You can just type your questions. So that makes it much more easier for you to uh, to watch the videos and access everything, okay? So um, visit the website, everyone. And of course, everybody knows that I have my book from Amazon, everybody. Uh, it's available in the Philippines now. And if you wanna order everybody, you can just email matusnursingreviewacademy at gmail.com. And of course, you can get my book from Amazon, okay? And everybody loves my book, hopefully, all right? And then we have another promo before we announce the winner for tonight. So our promo also is ongoing. It's uh, you get a free 30-day NCLEX review, online access only, okay? If you buy our merchandise products, $50 minimum, so we will give you a uh, uh, free 30-day online NCLEX access uh, review, okay? So just uh, send us your receipt and then um, we'll enroll you in the program for 30 days, everybody. Okay, so are you excited, everybody, to know the winner for tonight? Okay, so what did you learn tonight? Okay, so um, what did you learn tonight, guys? So what's the one thing that you learned before we announce the winner? Okay, 
But anyway, um, our winner for tonight for the free 90 day online NCLEX review. Okay. Yes, so the winner is. All right, so we have Mike Repatocodo Serafico. So congratulations, Mike, for winning tonight. Okay, thank you, Mike, and congratulations. I think you were here tonight. I saw you. So you won the 90 days. So everybody, can we please congratulate Mike for winning? So everybody, hopefully, some of you will win again next week. Okay. Um, but uh, thank you very much for joining everybody. Okay. So congratulations, Mike. And again, everybody have a safe uh, weekend. And thank you for joining me again tonight. Uh, my goal always is to make your review simple, fast, and easy. Everything is simple, fast, and easy because I know that um, NCLEX is overwhelming and our goal is to make your review uh, less overwhelming, everyone. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a good night.